Hello, shall I say hola or salute? Wherever you guys are in the world, I want to welcome you to Miami, guys, as we take another important step towards the biggest FIFA World Cup in history. 2026 will be the most inclusive FIFA World Cup ever as 48 teams take part in the tournament for the very first time. And we are super excited to reveal how the matches are going to shape up. Mm, Kevin, we are so happy you are here to celebrate today. Guys, you are in for a treat. We, we will be joined by some very special guests as we announce the opening matches in each of the three host countries. Take a look at the full schedule and find out who will host the biggest game in world football, the final. Whew. Qué momento. Muchachos. <laughs> Canela de mi celeste, my beloved Argentina, do it again. More than six million football fans are expected to attend matches in Canada, Mexico, and the United States. And like you, Jenny and Kevin, I cannot wait for the global celebration of football. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, guys. Look, see, we can all start planning our North American adventure very soon. Those 16 unique cities stretch from Vancouver on the Pacific Ocean to here in Miami, overlooking the Atlantic. Each will add their own flavor to the tournament as football unites the world in 2026. Canada, Mexico and the USA are home to a diverse population of nearly half a billion people. So, for the tournament, three visual identities have been created to celebrate their own unique Spirit. Andres, thank you so much. Yes, we can all expect a sporting celebration like we have never seen before. And there's going to be quite the guest list. And I really hope I am on that list. So one man who can hopefully help me stay on that list, FIFA <laughs> President Gianni Infantino. It is so lovely to see you, Mr. President. Gianni, how are you, man? It's good to meet you guys. I got to say thank you for thank having you me today. today. How fun to have this celebration. This is what it is all about. We are <laughs> counting down to 2026. Johnny, I do want to ask you about this crazy week you have had. You are always on the road growing the beautiful game, but this week was extra busy. You're hanging with Kevin Hart. How has the week <laughs> no, been? That's crazy. I mean, that's absolutely crazy. A crazy week and then uh, meeting Kevin. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. Sitting next to the most <laughs> iconic trophy in absolutely. world sport. It is, uh, it is fabulous, and uh, we can feel the adrenaline coming up. We can feel the excitement coming up for this incredible World Cup here in North America. We will uh, turn the three countries upside down and then back, uh, and uh, again upside down. It will be unique, it will be uh, incredible, and it starts now. <laughs> I love this. I can already tell you guys are close. We're going to have to keep this relationship going so Kevin can be at all the matches. Very close. What do you mean? Right now I'm connected to the president. Me and Gianni are like this. You understand that? I like this. Philadelphia. I'm expecting a like huge this. setup, Gianni. A huge setup in Philadelphia. Done. Done. I put you on the list. Yes. Already? It's you too. I, hopefully. As, well. as long as I don't <laughs> screw this up, I hope to stay on the list as well. Okay. I do have another question for you, Gianni, because we are all fans first. This may be a bit of a challenging question. I know Italy has had their troubles getting back to the World Cup these last couple of years, but what will the fan experience be like for FIFA World Cup 2026? Well, you said that Italy didn't qualify for the last Sorry. few World Cups, so I became a fan of the referees because they qualify every time <laughs> and, if, and they need support, and that's great. But uh, jokes aside, the experience of the fans will be, will be 
incredible. Three beautiful countries, 16 incredible host cities, but all other cities will be part of this World Cup experience as well. We'll have six million people coming to the stadiums, mm -hmm. dozens of millions in the fan fests all over the three countries, six billion people watching wow. it uh, from home. We unite the world football or soccer unites the world, doesn't matter how we call it, mm -hmm. as long as we unite, we are together, we celebrate, we'll put up the biggest spectacle that the universe has ever seen wow. here in North America. It's hard to describe until you actually experience a World Cup what the moment will mean. And Kevin, I want to know about your history with the game of soccer. Mm -hmm. Are you still playing? And just tell us about your love for the game. Well, my love for the game, of course, it started when I was younger. Uh, I think now being a soccer dad, you know, yeah. having kids that love the sport, have followed the sport, um, that's, of course, given me a different passion. But also, you know, I'm a, I'm a well-traveled guy. And, you know, through traveling, you really understand how big the sport of soccer or football Mm -hmm. um, is and I think the idea of bringing that many people together um, and you know sharing the love for one thing for one event that's always been like a dope thing for me so um, to be a part of it mm -hmm. to experience it uh, and now say that the states are going to be able to be in that conversation I feel like you know we're last at the table this has been <laughs> so big for so long so now having the opportunity to partake in something that's so global it's about time yes it's about time mm -hmm. uh, it's never too late it's never too late, never too late. it will be huge. It will be massive, yes. It will be huge. I assume, and we know, you'll be rooting for Team USA. But USA! What other teams? USA, what other USA all day. <laughs> USA all day. Okay? USA! But who else you want to see? All day. There's got to be someone else. I'm about to get a tattoo on my back that says USA all day. Can you uh, do that, please? No, you know what? I'm a big Messi fan. I, I always have been. So when Messi was with Argentina, mm -hmm. of course, you know, just following him and seeing what he's done for the country uh, through the course of time with his success in the sport, that's something that I followed. And now him going to the States, I think is a big deal. But the USA, you know, us being a part of the conversation, hopefully doing what we should do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's where my eyes will be. We got time to prepare. We do. I'm with you, Lots USA. I need to see that tattoo before 2026. I'm USA all day. You heard it here back. first. <laughs> it is time for our first big announcement of the day. FIFA World Cup 26 will kick off in June of that year. But when and where will the opening match take place? With so many incredible settings across the 16 host cities, any one of them would have been a fitting venue. Gianni, take it away. So here we are, thank you, and I'm honored to get the ball rolling. Uh, the opening game of uh, the FIFA World Cup 26 will be held on the 11th of June, El 11 de Junio, in uh, Ciudad de México, Mexico City, at the Estadio Azteca. We are the opening game. Somos Mexico. Thank you, Presidente. What a fantastic occasion it is going to be as Mexico kicks off the tournament at home on the 11th of June 2026 in El Estadio Azteca. It is a stadium with so many FIFA World Cup memories from 1970 and 1986, and the opening match of FIFA World Cup 26 will be great, another great chapter in its history. And Mexico has two more fantastic host cities. Historic Guadalajara will again welcome fans for the third time at the FIFA World Cup. And Monterrey, also a venue for 1986, will treat fans to its vibrant football culture again, this time around. We know that football is a way of life in Mexico, and we can only imagine the excitement in Mexico City right now. Let's head to the Mexican capital where Ana Katia Hernandez is joined by a guest who knows all about the magic of Estadio Azteca. Ana Katia, ¿cómo te va? 
Andrés, muchísimas gracias. Muy felices por esta gran noticia. We are so happy about this announcement. And yes, I am here in the majestic Estadio Azteca with a person who knows better than a lot of people what it means to be here in this iconic stadium. You know this stadium very, very well. Jaime. Hola, Good to Kathy. see you here. Jaime is the Mexican national team coach. And I would like to start asking you, how does it feel to be here in the Azteca? You've played, you've coached, and uh, what does it mean to represent your country? And now, how is going to be the difference? Because now you're going to have the opening game of the FIFA World Cup. Feliz, Anacati. ¿Cómo estás? Muy contento, muy emocionado por la noticia. Evidentemente, el 11 de junio va a ser una fiesta total en, en, en este país, pero en el Azteca, imagínate la energía que se va a sentir. ¿Cómo va a vibrar esta afición de, de, de tener a su selección en un juego inaugural por tercera vez en la historia? Le pregunté acerca de qué significa para él, después de la experiencia de haber entrenado y de haber dirigido en este estadio, lo que será ahora un partido inaugural. Y él nos menciona que está muy feliz respecto a esto. And he is so happy about being here in the Estadio Azteca. And he's excited because now an opening game with the fans, with the support of them, it's going to be such an amazing event and such an amazing and special day in his life and obviously in the all-national uh, team. I'm going to ask you another, that it, I think it's going to be harder and not because as a head coach of the men's team, how much difference do you think it is going to be to have the fans here supporting you. ¿Qué significa ahora tener el soporte de los fans, el apoyo alrededor de este estadio, más de 80 mil personas apoyando a México en ese partido inaugural? Muy importante porque México normalmente en cualquier parte del mundo donde se planta sentimos el apoyo de nuestro país, de nuestra afición, siempre nos sentimos, nos hacen sentir como locales, pero jugar en tu casa, jugar en este estadio histórico donde hemos visto pasar a tantas figuras, fue campeón Pelé, fue campeón Maradona y que sabemos que es un lugar tan importante para el fútbol internacional, será algo inigualable. Pelé was here, he was a champion. Maradona was here, he was a champion as well. So now having our fan support is going to be amazing and different because we're going to know how it's going to be the game and how it's going to be the, the way we want to do the, our performance and everything. So we have pressure, but we're happy for having this, this game. And the last one, but not least, <laughs> can you describe to us what uh, it means to Mexican football to have a FIFA World Cup in the country. ¿Qué significa para México tener nuevamente una Copa del Mundo y por qué es importante que regrese el trofeo a esta ciudad? Bueno, por algo tenemos una tercera ocasión, somos la tercera vez y la única que hemos tenido en la tercera inauguración de una Copa del Mundo. Somos grandes anfitriones, somos un país lleno de oportunidades, somos un país, la verdad, que se desvive por el turismo y en este caso, sin duda alguna, que toda la gente que nos acompaña en el Mundial eh, se llevará muy buenas experiencias de, de lo que somos. He's talking about the experience that you can have here in our country. Country. We have tourism, so we have culture, we have traditions, and we have a cosmopolitan cities, not just here in Mexico City, also in Guadalajara, in Monterrey. And he is talking about all that experience that you as a fan can have this. So as you see, Jenny and Andres, we're so happy and excited for being here. And we waiting for you on July the 20th and 26th. Ana, thank you so much. Oh, well done. An unforgettable tournament will kick off in Mexico, and it all gets underway in a little over 850 days. Yes, we are counting around here. Like <laughs> their fellow co-host, Mexico will play all three group games on home soil. As Andres mentioned, this is the third time that men's FIFA World Cup matches will be played in Mexico, and if the other two are anything to go by, then we are in for a real treat. The 1970 tournament in Mexico was the first <laughs> FIFA World Cup to be globally broadcast and in color. So, Gianni, uh, that meant you and football fans around the world could see the magic of that tournament and the wonderful Brazil team led by, of course, the king, Pele. What Pele. do you remember from that tournament? Well, Gianni, I'm not that old. <laughs> I was born in 1970. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, of course, but, but of course, of course, my dad uh, told me all about that World Cup and I saw these images. Uh, the Partido del Siglo, that was the match of the century, the semi-final between Italy and Germany with Beckenbauer and, uh, and Gigi Riva that we all remember in that final. Uh, incredible final with uh, this incredible Brazilian team mm -hmm. uh, who uh, smashed sure. Italy and won uh, uh, the World Cup with uh, Pelé. Mm -hmm. Unique, unique player. Great, great superstar. Legend.
Legend. Legend. I'm Legend. sorry to age you, Johnny. I didn't mean to you do did. that. I, I you knew did. that did you did. remember that. You agree. That. She did. She did. She did. I right under the old bus. I have a feeling <laughs> you're going to remember this one, though. Mexico's second tournament. I'm looking at the list, though. <laughs> She's off, off the list. list. She's off no. the list. No, no, no. All right, I'm going to try to get back on the list. You'll remember this one. 1986, it's certainly a very special one for Andres. He talks about it all the time. This time, it was another superstar who triumphed, and we know the name Diego Maradona. So, Gianni, I'm going to put you on the spot. But if you were to pick an all-star World Cup team, are you going with 1970 Pele or 1986 Diego? Who would question. you pick first? It's a great uh, question. I have this very, very clear. That's a great question. Very clear. The answer is very clear. I would put uh, uh, Diego Maradona on the left, Pelé on the right, and Kevin and myself, we are the strikers. Hey, now, we, we would talk. win the World Cup easily. Now we talk. Easily. Me? Well, Jenny, you didn't you make the cheer. cut. You didn't make the cut, Jenny. <laughs> it's simple. Cut. You didn't make it. I'm a goal scorer. I'm a striker. Back okay. <laughs> Striker. All right, I'm just trying to get involved you, you here. You scored the winning goal. That. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's a big deal. It's very exciting. And, you know, Kevin, I feel like you are probably pretty much looking forward to Mexico as well. This Absolutely. is going to be a huge moment for Absolutely. Mexico to celebrate this World Cup. Absolutely. I mean, look, an amazing city Mexico is. You're talking about the third time. I mean, that's big. Uh, just to have the games on their home soil, I can only imagine what it means to them and for their country. So, you know, as a fan, I love, once again, I love the engagement. I love what the sport brings. Uh, and it's in, it's inclusive, right? You're talking about bringing people together. You're talking about a spectacle, an event. So uh, from afar, I not only have supported, but I can't wait to like actually feel the energy of yeah. when it's happening. You yeah. got to go to Azteca. It's incredible. incredible. The noise, it, loudest atmosphere I have ever been a part of. I'm having the experience as a reporter. I think I'm having the experience. And you know the good news? I know the president, <laughs> yeah. so I can do it. You know I can the get guy. Set up. You are in. I can get set Contra up. Contrary to others where we are not sure. Yes. Well, you're Jen in. Jenny's out, but I'm calling you directly. I feel like we Gianni. just started the show and Gianni. I'm already off the list. Gianni, I'm in Mexico <laughs> City. Uh, can you set me up, Gianni? I got you, Kevin. I'm in. I love you. You know, El Presidente, so that's... Uh... <laughs> that's uh, favorite Mexican food, Gianni, putting you on the spot. Favorite Mexican food? Well, the problem with Mexican food is that everything is good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tacos. Okay. Tacos. I was going to say, the problem with Mexican food is it runs through you. Uh, you know, you're going to have to go. So you make sure you eat it in doses. You know, yeah. you don't want to go and just <laughs> indulge and, and, and binge. It's going to come out. So, you know, give yourself a break when and where you can. Tacos is always a safe bet, though. Yes. I, was, I wasn't expecting that answer, yeah, but well, it's, the truth. it's the honest truth. Yes, yeah, honest truth. I'm very honest, Jim. <laughs> I will ask you as well about uh, tequila, but we'll wait for after the show. So this okay. is the third time that Mexico will hold a men's FIFA World Cup matches, the second time that the tournament will come to the United States. But for Canada, this will be new territory. Mm. But they do have a strong history of hosting FIFA events with the record-setting FIFA Under-20 World Cup in 2007, the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in 2014, and the brilliant FIFA Women's World Cup in 2015, which was actually the first World Cup I was fortunate enough to cover. I know they are ready to welcome us once again. They will be the perfect host. So the opening match in Canada will be massive, but will it be in Toronto? or Vancouver. We are delighted to find out in the company of somebody who knows all about Canada's rich football history, CONCACAF president and FIFA vice president, Victor Montagliani. Thank you, Jenny. Extremely proud to be here as sharing this exciting news with you all. The first ever men's FIFA World Cup match to be hosted in Canada will be held in Toronto. We are Toronto. We are Canada's opening game. Canada's big day will arrive on Friday, the 12th of June, 2026. In two years' time, the bustling metropolis of Toronto will have five FIFA World Cup group stage matches, 
while scenic Vancouver in the Pacific Northwest will host 5-2. There is no doubt that football fans in Toronto and Vancouver from coast to coast are already excited for FIFA World Cup 26. Victor, you know Canada and Canadian football like nobody else, and in particular Vancouver. Can you imagine what it's going to be like during uh, the FIFA World Cup in your city? You'd like to say you can imagine it, but I'm sure when we're there in the moment, uh, it'll overwhelm all of us, whether it be in Vancouver or Toronto. Uh, and a lot of us have been working very hard in our country to have this moment come to fruition. And obviously the country is going to be uh, literally uh, on fire when it comes to uh, watching the game. So I think we're uh, very excited. A dream come true for you and for all Canadian fans. Absolutely a dream come true. And I'm sure it's going to be really special now, Victor, though. Let's head over to Toronto. We will be joined by James Duffy and the man in charge of the men's national team in Canada right now, Mauro Bielo. Andres, thank you. Mauro is the interim coach for, for Canada right now. And wow, it's real. Now, now you have a date. You know your opener is in Toronto. You'll have two more games in Vancouver. Let, let's start with the opener because Toronto, that stadium, has been a fortress for Canada in World Cup qualifying. Countless huge victories there. Is it the perfect place for you to open the World Cup? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success in that stadium, uh, in, especially in the World Cup qualifying. So we're super excited, super excited to see a sea of red to, to support us and uh, really happy for the fans uh, to be able to get this opportunity for us. You're going to have to get on a plane and play games in Vancouver, your second and third games out there. I, ideally, you'd stay in the same spot, but really with two crazy soccer crazy cities two passionate fan bases was this the only answer to play in both cities yeah i think so i think it's important to to be coast to coast and and uh, you know allow allow fans to see uh, their team and and be able to see this type of competition and uh, super excited and uh, looking forward to, to that energy in that stadium. You were in Qatar as an assistant. And I think the victory really in Qatar for Canada was qualifying first time in the World Cup in 36 years, first goal. But the expectations will be different playing at home. Is it a fair expectation to get that first win for a Canadian team in a men's World Cup and to get out of the group? Yeah, I think so. I think those will be the, the objectives, is to get that first win. And, uh, you know, when I think about that game in, uh, in Qatar when we scored our first goal, it was an amazing moment. And I'm sure w when we get that first win, it'll be a great moment for this country. And uh, that's the objective, and, and win that first one and then move on to the, to the next round. Moro, I think Victor has one more for you. Victor. <laughs> hey, James. Ciao, Mauro. Um, obviously, uh, it's a great moment for our country and you being a former player and you know that now we're having a lot more players on the international stage like Alfonso and Tejan and Jonathan David. Obviously, uh, we've uh, sort of uh, got our first experience in Qatar. How do you think, though, uh, how important is the next two years? Because a home World Cup, from everything we know, is, uh, has a lot more pressure than just uh, going to a World Cup. So how do you... How do you think we need to prepare over the next two years to get our, our players ready to uh, uh, compete? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's extremely important these next two years uh, to be able to, to you know, uh, do well at the next World Cup. I think, uh, you know, we've had uh, some of our players who've gained that experience in the last World Cup in Qatar, uh, and now they're moving into their prime. Uh, some of these key players who are uh, playing right now at the highest levels, like you said, will be continuing to compete at those levels. So it's super important uh, for us to have those players playing in those levels. But even for us, you know, we're, we're in a phase now where we have the opportunity to uh, play in the Copa America, which for, for us will be a great rehearsal for a big time tournament. And uh, we're looking forward to, to qualifying into that tournament and uh, preparing this team the best we can uh, so they're ready for 2026. You mentioned those young stars, Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, Tejon Buchanan, will all be in the heart of their prime in 2026. So perhaps perfect timing. Canada the coach, Canada the team, Canada the country. Can't wait for 2026, guys. All right, James Morrow, thank you so much. Toronto, it is. Uh, Canadians, they've been wonderful hosts. Whenever the football family <coughs> has been their guest, it looks like 2026 will be no different. So, Mr. President, President I do want to ask, why was Toronto the right fit to start this thing off in Canada? Well, because Toronto is uh, obviously a great, uh, great city, which has a great uh, football or soccer uh, tradition and, uh, and uh, one game, 
in uh, Toronto, the others uh, in uh, uh, Vancouver, which is also beautiful city. I mean, Canada will do fantastic in this World Cup. And by the way, in Vancouver, uh, the mother of Victor Montagliani is preparing the best <laughs> gnocchi in the country. So get ready for oh, that. Good to know. All right. I need an invite. Yeah, yeah. That sounds perfect. Kevin, how much time have you spent in Toronto and Vancouver? Uh, actually, I filmed a movie there. I was in Toronto for, I I'm going to say about three or four months. Vancouver, I'm no stranger to either. Amazing people in both. Uh, you know, we've done several shows there, um, you know, in the arenas and have never not packed it out. So passionate they are. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see how they'll turn out. And I do know that you say Toronto. They're going to respect me because you don't pronounce the T. That's what I learned. Toronto. Toronto. Oh. Yeah. See that? It's not Toronto. It's Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. I didn't even realize You're welcome. That. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Huh? Toronto it is. Thank you yes. for this <laughs> lesson. Toronto <laughs> it is. And we know that uh, in Toronto, they are a very passionate <laughs> football nation. And they are so excited to have us there to celebrate this World Cup. Earlier today, Gianni met one of Canada's biggest football fans. Uh, are we rolling? Uh, how do you make this? <laughs> You're more used than me. Yeah, on this, yeah, yeah. On this don't worry. I'll, I'll do it for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Canada as a whole, we have just such an um, um, incredible melting pot of people. But Toronto especially, there are just so many different cultural experiences. So, so when the World Cup hits, it's like... Everyone's on the oh, street. Everyone it's, is, like, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful time. And I mean, obviously, there's passion and... In, in many things, but the passion in the World Cup, I think, is unmatched. Yeah, millions of millions yes. of fans coming from all over the world. And I'm sure they will be welcomed like, like nowhere else. I mean... Especially in Canada. Not to make this a Canadian <laughs> promo. Please, feel free to visit Canada. We are the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life. Uh, but yeah, of course, uh, welcome with open arms. And just to have... Uh, all these people who are there with passion, uh, you know, with competitive spirit, but for a great game, for a great cause. I think that, uh, I think that it's just going to fill the streets with, with so much energy. Uh, yeah, we'll be ready for you in Canada. <laughs> we are 26. <laughs> Oh, man, it's so dope to see Drake not only turn out and, uh, you know, show love, always speaking positive about his city. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, Gianni, meeting Drake, I know you probably was like, okay, this is a big deal. I'm with Drake. But then you get to meet me, which is a lot bigger. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that it just shows the progression, right, of the day. But how was Drake? Were you, did you nah, Drake, was Drake, Drake was, was incredible. I mean, uh, a, real, a real soccer fan as well, like you, yeah. uh, from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Toron uh, Toronto? Uh, Toronto. Uh, Toronto. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think now we can actually reveal or disclose that uh, um, we are very close to an agreement where I will feature in this new album an Italian rap. Nice. If you want, you can join us Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And uh, then we do something spectacular for... Uh, well, you know, uh, rap rap and singing was my first love. Uh, comedy you see, there was, we are. Yeah, that's... I, but can I, you do that in Italian? An accident. I, can, I speak very fluent Italian. Perfect. Uh, nobody knows that. There we are, Drake. We are yes. ready. We're ready when you are, Drake. Could we give a preview of this Italian rap, Gianni? That's no, don't know. It's very don't expensive. Do that. No, yeah, don't do that. Okay. We're not doing that for free, Jim. No, exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, maybe later. You guys are going to collaborate over here without me. But either way, great to have Drake a part of this. He is special. Huge. And Toronto, okay. very happy yes. about us visiting so, so very soon. And what we know now, guys, Mexico will start in Mexico City. Canada will begin in Toronto. And how about the U.S. men's national team? It is now the moment football fans in the United States have been waiting for. Let's go live to Rob Stone to find out. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. And we're joined by the world's most famous soccer mom and her eldest son, Saint, Kim Kardashian. Saint, welcome. Got some big news for us. Yes, we are honored to be here to tell you that the U.S. will be playing its first World Cup 26 game here in Los Angeles. Right? Oh, Saint? In Los Angeles. Pretty good soccer mom you got here, by the way, Saint. Ma what? He's shaking he, it he off. He said I'm an embarrassing soccer mom because <laughs> I try to kiss him in front of his teammates. That's just because mom, <laughs> that's just mom loves you. Mom loves you because you've taken this young man to Japan, yep. to London, to Paris, to Miami to see some of the greatest soccer events. But nothing yep. will compare to the FIFA World Cup in 2026. So. What has you excited, Saints, about the 2026 FIFA World Cup coming to, coming to the U.S. and coming right here to L.A.? 
I don't have to travel. Yep, traveling in LA yep. is rough. All right. Yep, it's so Who are you close. looking forward to seeing? Weston McKinney. My boy, Weston McKinney. Good <laughs> answer. Good, good answer. So the 2026 World Cup is two years away. 2030 is six years away. You think we're going to see you in a FIFA World Cup, Saint? No. Yeah? I hope so. And if he's in there, you're going to give him kisses, right? Uh, oh, yes. That, I'll be the most embarrassing soccer mom <laughs> on the planet. Mark my words. Love it. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. Saint, thank congratulations. You. Enjoy the games. We'll see you guys in two summers' time right here Perfect. in L.A. Jenny? Rob, thank you so much. I have a feeling Kevin actually has a question for Kim. Well, no, I was going to ask you. He just asked it. Hey, I was going to say, Kevin. Kim, uh, as a proud mom, I know that you would be blown away if Saint actually did go and start to play soccer for the U.S., but he already beat me to the question. I think that was going to be my question because mm. I know that he follows the sport. He loves the sport. I want to see him yeah. make it to the big side of it, and if he does, I was going to ask you, how would you feel? That's all. Well, I'll definitely say it again. I will be the most embarrassing <laughs> soccer mom there is. Stop no shame. I will be there. Stop embarrassing that boy, Kim. Stop it. <laughs> enough is enough. Good to see you always. He said stop. <laughs> oh, well, it's so lovely to have you a part of that soccer family. Kim Kardashian, thank you very much. And thank you to Saint as yes. well. We're going to be rooting for you as your journey continues. Shouts out to Saint. <laughs>
at the World Cup in 2026? You know, it's going to be big, and it's not only about um, the communities hosting the, the World Cup. It's about all the communities across America really getting behind us and creating this wave of support that really pushes the team to try to go and reach new heights. So, um, you know, we're really counting on the public getting behind us. I'm excited for the public to get to know some of our players um, and, really, and really get a personal connection with them because it's a great group of guys. Greg, we appreciate your time. Look forward to this summer at Copa America on Fox, but all signs leading to FIFA World Cup 2026. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Rob. Rob, thank you. Greg, so nice to hear from you as well. All right, look at that group stage lineup. Gianni, an unprecedented 72 group matches at FIFA World Cup 26 across multiple time zones in our three host countries. Fan experience and player welfare were really the priority when developing this schedule with FIFA working hand in hand with national team coaches. And that was really the goal. Yes, it will ensure that football is played in the best possible conditions. It guarantees that fans have shorter journeys to travel, and it will mean that more matches can be scheduled at the best times for you, the fans watching at home. It's all about the fans. Gianni, as a fan in Qatar, you were able to attend every match, which is pretty incredible given the distance of that country. This is going to take a little more planning this time around. How will you decide which matches to attend? <laughs> it will be a bit more complicated uh, unless somebody invents the beaming of... Uh, <laughs> human beings from one stadium <laughs> to the other, then I can attend all matches. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that uh, wherever I go, I will, uh, I will be welcomed, like all the fans from all over the world. And it's important what, uh, what you just said, what Andres just said. This whole calendar has been designed to make sure that the fans can travel with the teams in a way that is not too burdensome. Mm -hmm. We have clusters and they can go and, and, and support their teams everywhere and they will be welcomed everywhere. So party will be great. Kevin, are you getting on the plane to travel around? I'm with Gianni. I roll with the president. <laughs> the president go, that's where I go. I'm connected. You, you understand connected. that? I I'm do. connected. Don't ask me any questions. Talk to the president because I'm with him. Hey, Done. Kevin, I'm, I'm, I'm your friend. Take me along, man. No, I don't know. Uh, you're on the list. Uh, no, I'll be on the list. list. Yeah. Come on. Gianni's got Not a yet. list. Not the yet. The list is Not small. Yet. The list is very small. Very small. It's an intimate list. Yeah. We got an album that we prepared for. We got to spend a lot of time together. <laughs> All right. I'm still trying to get back on the list. But until then, let's take a closer look at how the tournament is going to shape up. Get ready for the greatest FIFA World Cup ever. 2026 is set to be the most exciting and inclusive FIFA World Cup of all time. Three host countries. 16 host cities. 48 teams never before have so many nations competed for the ultimate prize in world football. For the initial group stage, teams will compete in 12 groups of four teams, with the top two in each group, plus the eight best third place teams progressing. For the first time, the round of 32 will be introduced, which is sure to dial up the knockout stage drama in 2026. Three group stage, and five knockout matches. Eight games will stand between one nation and football history. An unprecedented 104 matches across three countries sound complex, but FIFA has developed a schedule which places players and fans first. By geographically grouping the host cities, most teams and their supporters will make shorter journeys and should not have to travel coast to coast. A principle of three days between matches allows players to recover, whilst fans can attend games in multiple cities, leaving the FIFA World Cup fan experience to the full. History will be made on the 11th of June, when the iconic Estadio Azteca in Mexico City kicks off the tournament, becoming the first stadium to host three FIFA World Cup opening matches. A day later, the eyes of the world shift north, as on the 12th of June, Canada hosts its first ever men's FIFA World Cup match in Toronto, and the USA gets the ball rolling in LA, with the first FIFA World Cup match on home soil since 1994. The three hosts will play all their group matches on home turf. Get ready for FIFA World Cup like no other. 
Wow, I have chills. Uh, I am so excited. Andres, this will be the 14th FIFA World Cup, 11th men's tournament you have worked, which means, first of all, I have a lot of catching up to do. But what are your impressions of the schedule? It, there, it's incredible. I really like the way the schedule is laid out by grouping the host cities. It's going to be more convenient for fans and teams to go from match to match. I used to say, and the president knows this, that the FIFA World Cup is 64 Super Bowls rolled into one month. Mm. Now I have to change my line, line Mr. President. It's 104 <laughs> games rolled into about a month time. 104. Uh, I know we will get to the quarters. We're going to get to the semifinals, the bronze medal final, and of course, the final itself later. But Gianni, can you just tell me a little bit about which city will host the most of those 104 matches? Well, uh, it's, it's important uh, to know that all cities, of course, are hosting a, a number of matches. And one of mm -hmm. these cities, of the 16 cities, will host nine out of these 104 Super Bowls, <laughs> uh, 104 Super Bowls in one month, and that city is uh, Dallas. Ooh, Dallas. Dallas is an amazing city. Sounds amazing good. Amazing city with amazing people. And, and so much love for the game. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's, I cannot wait. It's going to be great. You guys good with it? Andres, you good? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's excellent that they're going to have so much football around. Uh, I remember 1994, obviously, and uh, it was, you know, super, the excitement all around the country. All right. Well, Andres and I, we both love working the FIFA World Cup so much. And our next two guests have actually won it. How about that? The legendary Cafu was on the Brazil team who conquered the world at the Rose Bowl in 1994 and also lifted the trophy in 2002. Heather O'Reilly won the FIFA Women's World Cup in Canada nine years ago as part of that brilliant U.S. team. Welcome to you both. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks this for having exciting. us. This is exciting. This is exciting. Kevin, welcome to the soccer party. Uh, this is crazy, right? We're cool, right? Who did, what do you mean? Yes, you're cool. I, <laughs> I feel cooler now that I'm a part of your party. Yeah, you're in now. You're on the list. It's a good sign. <laughs> FIFA World Cup 26 is going to be a non-stop football fiesta. And with the addition of a round of 32 to the knockout stage, there will be even more drama. It is go big or go home for double the amount of of teams. So Heather, I do want to ask you, what is the difference between how you feel going into a knockout game compared to a group stage match? What's the mentality change? Well, of course, you're nervous for any match of the World Cup. Every game is, is huge. But when you get to those knockouts, you know it's win or go home. You're starting to see yeah. other teams pack their bags and you know that everything, all the pressures just get elevated. Kafu, what is your greatest memory of a knockout game? Dunque, io ho tantissime belle, belle memorie de, del Mundiale. In 94, quella di Bebeto, con Romario e, e Mazzinho, che mm -hmm. sta molto bella. Quella di Branco, quello surdasso, in quella partita 3-2. Era 2-2 con Olanda, che giocava molto, molto bene. E Branco ha visto quello gol che è stato fantastico. Però il Mundiale del 2002, quella di Ronaldinho Gaúcho, perché noi stavamo perdendo 1-0 contro l'Inghilterra, che giocava bellissimo. E il che vuol dire Ronaldinho del meglio campo, che è stata pazzesca. There are so many uh, World Cup memories that I have, but obviously in 1994, I remember Mazzinho and Bebeto doing the celebration because of his newborn kid. And then Claudio Vaz Ibrahim Leal, Branco. 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 And the left-footed shot to beat uh, the Netherlands 3-2 uh, after the match being tied 2-2. And of course, in 2002, we were down against uh, England and Ronaldinho hit that, that a spectacular goal from midfield. Mm. Wow, incredible. Wow, uh, boy, the more teams in the knockout stage than ever before in 2026, only the very best will make it to the semifinals and beyond. Jenny, all that is left now is to find out who will stage the final matches of the tournament. First, let's discover where the bronze medals will be handed out. Yes, Andres, uh, and I am delighted to announce that the bronze medal final will be hosted in Miami. Miami. <laughs>
Thank you, Johnny. Great news for the 305 Miami and the Sunshine State. We live in the best city. I'm sorry for Philadelphia. I'm sorry for Minnesota. I'm sorry for all the other cities. We live in the best city in the U.S. Well, Andres, you know this place better than anyone else. Mm. So how will Miami be for this huge honor this month? It will be a long month party, a 40-day <laughs> long party. All right, we love a good party, right? We need that always around here. Uh, yep. And it's going to be so exciting for this whole community. Yes, of course. And, you know, we can uh, start planning uh, right now because it's going to be just absolutely great in Miami and, of course, in all other cities in three countries. Well, I know so many would like to go all the way to the final, right? That is mm -hmm. always the goal. And it's about 90 minutes. It's yeah. excruciating. At times, it even goes to penalties. Mm -hmm. And I hate to bring it up, Heather, but there was a moment from 2011 where you guys went to penalties against Japan. And... You lost that game, but how did it motivate you, Heather, to go win it in 2015 with the United States? Too soon, Jenny. Oh, it's too soon. It's, too it's soon. been a while. It's still so wrong. Oh, we could not have been closer to winning the World Cup in 2011. We were up against Japan, one nil. Then they, then they draw it. Then we were up two one. Then they pull a draw again, and uh, we thought it was in the bag. It goes into penalty kicks, and and Japan wins it. Um, so we were so close, but it, we were so motivated to really. Uh, get after in those next couple of years, make sure that we were closing the gap so there was no questions in 2015. And uh, we were able to do it uh, in 2015 against the same Japan team. We won 5-2 to two with Carly Lloyd's hat wow. trick. You remember uh, it. Yes, of course. And, and Kafu, how did you handle the pressure in 1994 of the, uh, the penalty shootouts? Penalty is incredible. That time that goes from the middle of the field to the ball, Sembra una eternidade, non, mm -hmm. non, non acaba más, eh, pasa todo en, en la mente. En 94, nosotros habíamos la oportunidad de, de ganar aquí, en mm -hmm. América, en el penalti, más penalti es siempre muy, muy duro. Aquello que en la semana hace todo lo que es balia, mm -hmm. a la fin. Y cuando Baggio, que era el mejor batedor del mundo de penalti de Italia, que es balio, digamos, si può, può succedere, ma il penalti è sempre molto difficile, è sempre molto duro quando tiene grandi, grandi portieri no? da frente con mm -hmm. il come Tafarel, come altri grandi comodità. Ma è molto, molto difficile il penalti, è, molto, è una tensione, una, una sensazione di mm -hmm. algo o no, <ride> è molto difficile. The penalties are so, so hard. The walk to the penalty spot is probably the longest that we experience in life because everything goes through your head and you can practice all week long and then everything goes wrong and it's very, very hard to hit penalty kicks, especially when you have so many good goal goalkeepers like Tafarel, like Dida. And when we saw Roberto Baggio, the best penalty taker of their time, miss, it was a huge sigh of relief, the joy of winning and the pain of losing on penalties is part of why we love football. Well, I am in awe of both of you. Thank you so much for being here, sharing that Legends. story. And, you know, there is something that we have to... Wait, I want to know, would you take a penalty? Would I take... I mean, listen, first of all, you're talking to an athlete. Uh, so there's not much that I wouldn't do or couldn't do. So absolutely, yes. The answer is yes. We all share the same passion. And I think we probably, like, really have a lot of similarities, like, with our games. Um, and I'm going to give you guys some tapes. Y'all can see footage of me, actually, when I played. You guys can give notes when and where you can. That's good to know. That's good to know. Well, those who can steer the way through the knockout stages will find themselves in the most anticipated event in sport, and that is the FIFA World Cup Final. Incredible memories from some of the greatest World Cup finals 
of all time. Oh, and that is a taste of the magic that awaits one host city. And now let's find out who that will be. So here we are for the biggest announcement in the history of announcements. Where will the final of the 2026 FIFA World Cup be played? The winner is New York, New Jersey. There's going to be a mighty big celebration in New York and New Jersey tonight. Add that date, Sunday, the 19th of July, 2026, to your calendars. Oh, so there we have it. The full FIFA World Cup 26 match schedule of 104 matches with the quarterfinals being held in Boston, Kansas City, Los Angeles, and Miami. And for the semifinals, the passion and color of the fans dreaming of glory will descend on Atlanta and Dallas. And as Gianni just announced, New York, New Jersey will provide a stunning backdrop to the final. I don't know about you guys, but now that we have the full match schedule, it feels like the World Cup 26 is around the corner. Oh, I wish it was. It certainly does. I just, I want to do it. I want to get to it right now. I do want to thank everyone so much for being here. The FIFA president, Gianni Infantino, CONCACAF president and FIFA vice president, Victor Montagliani, and all of our wonderful guests for their help today. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Merci beaucoup. The attention now turns to teams around the world who dream of joining the three host countries and being part of the greatest football event in history. Qualifying is already underway across the world and with 48 teams invited to this groundbreaking tournament, more players and fans than ever before can dream of reaching a FIFA World Cup, Kevin. <laughs> Listen, it is going to be quite some party in 2026. And you're all invited as football unites the world in Canada, Mexico, and the USA. Woo. All right. See you in 2026. This is big. <laughs> I'll see you then. Shout out to Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico. Somos Mexico. We are Mexico. Mexico! We are Canada. 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 We are Canada. We are Canada. We are the U.S. The U.S. We are the U.S. The U.S. Welcome, everyone. We nurture the game. We dream big. We admire the bold. We are dedicated to the game. Nous valorisons la diversité. We embrace the future. Honramos nuestras tradiciones. Celebramos al fútbol. We welcome the world. Le damos la bienvenida al mundo. The countdown is on. The countdown is on. For us to unite as one. Together. Together. Ensemble. Together. Juntos. Juntos. Somos 26. 26. 26. We are 26. 26. We are 26. 26. 26. We are 26.